Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fisher vlog number 29, and I find as this vlog series progresses, there's more and more material that I want to include in them, and I still really would like to keep these down to a manageable watch time. So, as I try to, you know, do updates on the various projects and whatnot that's going on, some of the stuff may get left out. And if there is a particular project that you've been waiting for an update on, that you haven't seen in a while, definitely leave a comment below and I will try and include it in next week's because as I get busy and there are certain things that attract my attention and things I like to do and, and keep an eye on, there are things that are going to fall through the cracks and like I said, if you want to see certain things, uh, definitely leave me a comment and I'll try and get to it. I definitely need reminders from time to time. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is this is the original undergravel filter I made, the one with the new concept for putting it in a box. And recently I did a cleaning on it. And at the time I said, well, it doesn't really need to be cleaned. And it didn't. But there's this interesting thing that happens with almost every filter type. As they get a little bit dirtier, uh, their efficiency drops. Uh, not a lot, necessarily. But if you have a look at this tank, it's uh, two feet from back to front, and you'll see the water is nice and clear. <laughs> Don't take into account the, the uh, old glass that's here, but the water itself is pretty much crystal clear. And that is actually better than it was before I cleaned it. I mean, I'm not sure if you remember what it was, and I probably should have included a clip of that here. Uh, but I didn't get to it, and if you want to go back and have a look at the other one, you can do a comparison that way, I suppose. But this tank now is a lot clearer. I mean, these aren't really mechanical filters to begin with, but it is doing a much better job now. And that is something I really wanted to point out. Even though certain filters, uh, and again, it pretty much includes all of them, uh, have fairly lengthy you know, times that you don't need to clean them. Uh, mechanical ones may be less so, but these filters here are very good, and two years is probably too long to keep it at its optimum efficiency. I probably should clean this uh, every six months or eight months, and I'm going to probably try uh, getting into a regime where I am doing that more regularly, just to see if uh, it does maintain things a little bit better. And uh, the other thing I should mention as... Uh, part of this is there was no spike in ammonia, uh, no change in the behavior of the fish at all. Uh, they're all happy and healthy as you can see and uh, like I said there's no indication that even though I cleaned the filter that there was a, a disturbance in the biochemistry of the tank which is uh, good because it's important when you clean filters that that sort of thing doesn't happen. But there is a vast amount of surface area in all that gravel there and it is very very efficient and the other thing i want to mention while we're looking at this is if you look at the surface of the tank the duckweed is gone <laughs> it's finally I, i'm getting to the point now i think we're about 90 percent uh, duckweed free in my fish room uh, this whole rack here now is all clear of it except uh, the one tank which is to the left and i left that alone because i have an interesting way of getting rid of duckweed that I have coming up that's going to be in a video uh, hopefully sometime in the near future but that also reminds me that uh, these videos now as we progress towards the end of the year I do plan on doing some updates or kind of like year in progress thing it has been kind of a wonky year to begin with but I do want to uh, go through some of the DIY projects and that that I have done and see how uh, how they've done and ones I like, ones I don't like, that sort of stuff. So that's all coming up as well. And if there's a particular build, uh, filter, tank, uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter, that you would like to have a look at, again, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. And hopefully in the two or three weeks that are remaining in this year, I can uh, get to those. I didn't really do a good job of that last year. Uh, so some of those updates may actually uh, come from the year before. Uh, so we'll see how that goes too. So yeah, that's enough about this and enough of rambling on. I mean, probably if I left a lot of this stuff out, you'd have more time for <laughs> some of the other updates. So one of the big things I really want to update is the new Paladarian build. Mostly because uh, it's progressing quite nicely, but also because of the new project I mentioned. And there were... Uh, one thing really important that I needed to do to this before I can actually get wiring plants on this, and that is I have to 
enclose it. It needs to have that humidity increase. And so what I'm going to do now is, you can see there's a little bit of a sag there with the 1 8 because it will warp and droop in time. You can see a little bit there right in the middle. Uh, so I need to frame this and get it to the point where it is more solid. And then I need to put a nice, easy to remove front lid on this. Uh, and the, the easiest way for me to do this is just to make uh, an L-shaped section of acrylic. And it's just going to sit on brackets. And those brackets are these things here I'm going to attach. It's very easy to do this, uh, even with it in place like this. Uh, and I, because it doesn't have to be watertight, uh, I just need to make sure it's secure, so that also makes it a lot easier. One of the interesting things I found about uh, that wood in the background, the standing dead wood, it is actually emitting uh, an odor. Not a bad odor or anything, but if you've ever been in the woods, uh, wandering around, especially after a rain, it is emitting that kind of smell, which is kind of cool. Uh, the first time I went down to the fish room, I actually had to... Uh, take a second to think about it because uh you know when you go in your fish room it, it smells a certain way uh, like a like fish room and this was a little change in the, that so it was kind of interesting and uh, believe it or not once i put this cap on it completely went away because now it's all being contained in here so there you go the framing is around it and then i just made an l shape uh well one eighth inch plexiglass i'm oh, sorry acrylic and you'll notice I put a little door on the lower left there. And that's mostly for feeding. But also because I haven't run any air into this, uh, it does need a gas exchange aspect to it. And if I cap that off completely, uh, there wouldn't be any. So later on, there's going to be air in that as well. And that will change. But for the moment, it, it definitely needs that little hole. But also, that's why I don't have to take the lid off. So let's get on to the plant growth experiment. Uh, it is doing very well. There is actually a milestone uh, at this point in one of the tanks, and it is going to be the final tank. So we'll get to that in the end. Everything else is doing uh, perfectly fine. Believe it or not, of all of them, I still prefer this one here. I know it's not growing as well. Uh, it, it's growing. The plants are healthy. Uh, as you can see by the high humidity planter up there. Uh, actually, all the high humidity planters are indistinguishable which is kind of an interesting result by itself but these plants here are growing they're healthy uh, there's a good color they're robust uh, there's nothing about them that I could say is wrong you can see in the back with the java fern it's sending a whole pile of new leaves out it is doing just fine and now over here with the soil uh, you can see that the valsin area is actually at the surface and it is thicker and it's sending out more roots yes all that stuff is, is important but i find uh, again i spend an awful lot of time pruning and cleaning out plants that a little slower growth sometimes is not a bad thing and as you can see in this planter here it is doing just as well as the other one and like that's actually a very odd result i mean uh, i would actually have thought that because of the extra nutrient that's in the water especially in this one here and because java fern doesn't mind a little extra acidity that it would do uh, better but no it's just doing just as well as the others so there you go this one here is probably like i said doing better than the other ones but it's up to you guys whether or not you think that's important to me uh, not so much uh, i actually prefer the slightly slower growing things but again this is nowhere near done yet uh, we shall see how this all progresses by the end now this is the plant growth substrate and it is now starting to excel it is going past the other two and as you can see uh, the red luigia is now reached the surface and again the valisneri is doing really well and everything else is too i mean there's nothing really wrong with this and if this is the kind of growth rate you would like uh, i would definitely recommend it uh, and again the high humidity planter is uh, doing just as fine as the others, uh, no real difference, but then again, like I said, that's just something else. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and let me know uh, definitely in the comments what you think about this. And we're, this is going to continue for quite some time still, but uh, I just wanted to show you that there you go, it's reached the surface. And it, obviously, you know, the leaves are healthy and everything else as well too. 
So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.